Hello friend, it's Mark out on the back 40 and in this episode I'd like to cover what I think would be the most important thing you can be doing for your property to improve your hunting. If you're a follower of the channel, sorry I'm going to repeat something I've said a hundred times if you're new, I just want to put things in perspective a second. What we talk about here a lot is, is our mind more than anything else, because I think that that's the most important thing. And the reason why I think that's most important is why. What advantage do you as a hunter, do I as a hunter, what advantage do I have over a white-tailed deer while I'm pursuing them? Is it hearing? Nope, they hear we're way better. Is it smell? I can smell better than they can? No way. Huge advantage for them over that. What about uh, sight? No, they got the advantage. They can see movement really, really well, right? So what kind of an advantage do we as humans have over white-tailed deer? It's our brain, it's our mind, it's how we think. That is the only advantage that we have over them. And that's really, if you really think about it, all these YouTube videos and all the books and all the, all the stuff that you have consumed over the last uh, few years is really uh, to, to, to condense all the knowledge that we have as humans to use that as our weapon, it's our edge, it's what we're better at against the white-tailed deer to try to harvest whatever makes you feel like you're successful at deer hunting. So that's the, that's the context of what we're gonna be talking about here a second, right? So that's why I'm saying now, okay, what is the most important thing you can do on your property to improve your hunting? And I would say always keep in mind the things that deer need, right? The four things. They need food, they need water, they need cover, a feeling of security, and they need space. Those are the four things we think about all the time. And what of those four do you think is most important to have a mature buck on your property and moving around your property during daylight? Is it food? All right, I always take things to an extreme, so let's take this to an extreme a second. I just want you to think about this. Let's say you just bought 40 acre square and it's got mature timber on it. And if the whole thing is mature timber, and I'm walking over here, I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. So the whole thing, you can stand there and you can look through and you can see the other side of the property in that mature timber. All right, so that's, that's, let's just say that. So what kind of cover is that? It's terrible cover, right? So if you had the best food plot in the world, it was perfect clover, it was perfect brassica, it was perfect everything, and you uh, put that in the middle of that 40, do you think that that's gonna improve your deer hunting very much? Maybe a little bit. Especially at night. At night they'll probably pour in there like crazy, but we're talking about daytime movement. All right, same thing, 40 acres. Throw a, a big pond in the middle of it. You can still see all the way through it, and you've got a pond in the middle of it. Now you got water, and I'm, when I'm talking about open stuff, I'm talking like this. This is about an acre on my property, acre, acre and a half of this. So if you have this, as far as you can see, you can see all the way through it, and it's got pond in the middle of it. Did that help your hunting? Again, maybe a little bit, maybe. Probably not very much though. Okay, space, they just need room. There's nothing you can do. They just need room. They need a few hundred acres to live on, whether it's your hundred acres or a combination of you and all your neighbors or whatever, there's nothing you can do about space, right? There's just nothing you can do about it other than buy more property, <laughs> okay? So what does that leave then? It leaves cover. So now let's say that you had this open property like this, 40 acres, and you hunted this for five years and you got X amount of deer from it. Now let's say that you took the same 40 acres and in one year you went through and you cut the whole thing down. You had a, a lumber company come in and clear cut the whole thing. So that year, you probably wouldn't do super well, would you? But the following year, all the sprouts and all the growth starts coming up. The sun is getting on the ground. And now all of a sudden you got three or four feet high of what I'll call thick stuff. And I'm gonna turn around here to show you the difference. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about here. Now you've got 40 acres 
of thick stuff. And what does this, this clear cut, saying that you went through and you, you cut like crazy, what does that provide? Food? Yeah, food like crazy. I never realized this, but uh, if you look at the NDA website, 75% um, of a deer's diet is made up of forbs, you know, like weeds, broadleaf weeds, and browse, which is the ends of all these little twigs and sticks, all the, sh the tender little ends that grew last year, they pluck that and eat it. And then, uh, and then you throw mast in there too, like the acorns, like, okay, you leave a few of these oak trees up so you get some acorns. But 75% of their diet is that stuff. So not only does that provide food, but the other thing it provides is cover, right? Like this is my number one bedding area on the property right there. I mean, if you go in there 20 yards, that is the primo bedding area. That is where all the good stuff happens on this property. And so the reason for that is they've got two of their most favorite things in there. They've got cover and all of that is food. Food plots is probably what you thought the answer was gonna to be to like the thing you can do to improve your property the most. Better food plots, focus on food plots. And what I would challenge that, I would say that is, that is low priority. The food plots are about 10% of their diet. Can you believe that? All the time and money that we spend on food plots, and it's only 10% of their diet. Where what, if we grabbed a chainsaw and went into these woods like this, if you grab your chainsaw, you spend a few days cutting all that down, getting sunlight down in there, putting side cover in there, you have all this woody browse that starts growing up in there, it's gonna give them 75% of the food they wanna eat, Plus it's gonna give them the most important thing that they need, which is cover and security. So my suggestion to the number one thing you can do for your property right now is make sure you have enough of this, the thick stuff, and very, very minimal amount of this, those nice open woods. And it might be a pine plantation for you, or it might be some other kind of thing. Maybe it's all grass. If it's low grass, it's low and low quality grass, that's no good either. Forbes and browse. So that's what I'm saying right now. And the reason I want to publish this right now, it's um, mid-March, it's chainsaw season. So the best thing that you could be doing is fire up that chainsaw. So why do we think, why do I think food plots are such a big deal? Well, like the smart people always do, follow the money. How much money is there in everybody on YouTube, all the people who are sponsored, how much money is there for them if they tell you to go out and buy a chainsaw and then put gas and oil in it? I mean, you're gonna spend what, five or 600 bucks on a good chainsaw and then spend what, 30 or 40 bucks a year on fuel and, and uh, bar lube? I mean, it's, it's just not a lot of money there. But then think about, okay, you got a half acre food plot on your property. How much money are you gonna spend on that? Think about the seed, the fertilizer, the herbicides. That's just the stuff you use every year. Then what about the equipment that you're gonna buy? All the tractors and the rototillers and the discs and the drills and oh my gosh, that adds up to huge amounts of money and recurring money, money that you spend every year. I spend every year on seed. Every year I come back and I spend 600, 700 bucks a year on seed over and over and over again. That's why, even though it's only 10% of the deer's diet and what percentage of their time is in a food plot. Now I'm not saying food plots are bad or wrong. I think food plots are good in that they are part of the puzzle, but they're not a big, huge part of the puzzle. This is the biggest part of the puzzle. Bedding, browse, forbs, thick cover, using your brain for security. How do I get in and out of my blinds so I don't mess around with the safe stuff for them? That's where it is, so, all right, is that enough? Enough talking about that, so my, uh, the answer to the question is, get out your chainsaw and get busy cutting. Thanks for watching.